Good evening, folks. This is not the normal way we look at the sun. It's 174 angstroms of light from ionized iron via Proba 2 swap. We've got a couple of notes and then a Titanic story to share. First, we're watching Proba 2 because SDO is down. Not the satellite, but the data center in Stanford where we get the images. This should be restored in short order. And indeed, we have several ways of watching the sun when SDO goes down. Proba, GOES, and of course Stereo, SOHO, and the Solar Flare and Solar Wind monitors. We'll see what we have to work with in the morning. Up next, bad news overnight from Afghanistan. Shallow rumbles matter so much here where a 5.9 earthquake was, and often is, far deadlier and more damaging than a larger earthquake somewhere else in the world. Hearts are with them as the death toll is expected to rise. Now, the big story, and it's from Wired.com, with an A-minus rating from the observers, which is about as high a score as we give. It's about what many of you observers already know. The sun has many times tossed an eruption our way that would send us back to the Stone Age. The last one was just before the emergence of humans' electrical age. The article interviewed Dr. McIntosh from Colorado about his work with Dr. Dick Potty, who was slated to be at our 2020 Observers Conference before COVID canceled it. Out of the gate, we stand with Dr. McIntosh in that so much of what they say about the sun is just made up physics. The nuclear furnace. Why sunspots appear where they do. Why the sun's polarity flips every 11 years. But what's real is the fact that during the big event that will happen again someday, we check the magnetic polarity of the plasma eruption via satellite and would only have as much as an hour's warning in as little as 15 minutes from when it hits the satellite to when it arrives at Earth. That big one will take out every circuit board and will instantly cause satellites to fail and every airplane in the sky to attempt a no radio, no GPS, old school by the eyes landing. While every transformer on the ground is vulnerable, it only takes nine lost in the right place to take out power to the entire United States, and they estimate hundreds would fail in that scenario. You've heard this next bit before. What comes next? No power, no heat, no air conditioning, no phone, no refrigeration, no gas, no ATM, and no water. If the sun hits us big time, we could see a billion or more people die worldwide, and that is before you consider what would happen to the nuclear plants, which are even more vulnerable than this article states. The article discusses how they only have a couple weeks of diesel for the backup generators. But who says the generators are going to work at all? They're as vulnerable as anything else. Despite warnings from the scientists, power companies have done little to the grid except make it more vulnerable, especially to longer lasting storms, ones that go on for days, or those that are more powerful. The utilities aren't even required to plan for another 1859 superstorm. So, even adding the capacitors they suggest in the article just isn't going to cut it. And the news gets worse from there. That's not even all the sun can do. Since those government reports about the 1859 superstorm, we have learned and confirmed the super flare potential of our star. While their half measures and awareness likely protects them against the more regular storms seen every 11 year sunspot cycle, and just as we saw, they're not prepared for bigger ones like 1859. 1859 is about 10 to 25 times less powerful than what the sun does on even longer time scales. Furthermore, none of this horrible news takes into account that Earth is more vulnerable by the day. As Earth's magnetic poles shift and the power of the magnetic field fades, we are losing our shield against energy from space, cosmic rays, supernova explosions, and indeed, the sun. The takeaway is this. The sun does this regularly on geophysical timescales. Every 150 years or so, we take one of those blasts and we're due again right now. Maybe this cycle, maybe the next one. We have been lucky not to have one in the electrical age thus far, but that luck will run out. And with the weakening magnetic field of Earth, we are in big trouble. Globalization has taken the non-electric population of Earth from over 2 billion to just a handful in the last two decades, meaning the entire planet is at risk. We are due for the sun's judgment, and the only defense we have is disappearing. This is why we do what we do, and I'll see you in the morning for the daily update. Be safe, everyone.